Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. I'm Father Owen Burns, I'm the pastor at St. Mark's in Chris Pemsis, and Monsignor Hanbury has asked me to fill in for him this weekend as he's on vacation. And as a visiting priest, it's a very fine balance, a tightrope that we walk. You know, you want to be good enough for the parishioners that, you know, they want the pastor to be able to have vacation again, but not too good that they never want him back, right? Um, and Senior Hanbury deserves a well-deserved uh, vacation. Um, so we'll pray for him during this Mass. Uh, for his safety and well-being as he travels. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, among all, all the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, 
as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant of offering and sacrifice to God. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be, in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word so as to present the church to himself in splendor, without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is a spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted them by my Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I am selfish. It is actually one of the many deeply rooted sins that exist in my life. And I can try to explain away being selfish by blaming my upbringing, being the youngest child, the youngest grandchild on both sides of the family, having been spoiled by my parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. But the real reason I am selfish is because I choose to be. I choose not to put others before myself. Their needs, their good. To truly love the other person, to desire their good before my own. And I don't tell you this lightly. God has called me to be a priest not just so that I can serve his church and his people, you, his faithful, not just so that you can have access to the sacraments, but in doing so, he is sanctifying me. Through my vocation to the priesthood, God is giving me opportunities to grow in virtue, to put away, to put an end to my sin. I actually am indeed selfish. It's a deeply rooted sin. Then there's a call to the regional hospital in the middle of the night. It's waking me from my sleep, a sleep that I so often say that I deserve because again, I'm entitled, I'm selfish. And the voice on the other end is always extremely polite, but always urgent. We hear the ward the patient's on, the room number, and their name. And somehow I choose to say good morning. I choose to turn on a lamp, to scratch down the information that I was just given. I choose to splash my face with water, wipe the sleep out of my eyes, and brush my teeth, not for my own benefit, but for those who I'm approaching in the hospital room. The sacrament of the anointing of the sick has tremendous grace. Grace that outflows on the person anointed for both physical and spiritual healing. And so abundant is a grace in the sacrament that even these hands, the hands of a sinner, is able to receive healing if only I desire it, if only I am open to God's grace in that moment. Healing from being selfish as a faithful receiving that sacrament is priority in that moment. Humbling as they don't want any specific priest, they want God. They want his grace and mercy that only he can provide. They're not looking for a selfish man to stand by their bedside, they are looking for their God. In that moment, by calling me to be a priest, God is inviting me to be less selfish, if even for a moment. He's calling me to choose to love another person, to desire their good for their benefit, to choose the good of others for their sake and not my own. In the first reading, Joshua pulls no punches when addressing us, the faithful. If you're unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. It's an extremely bold statement, but one that is relevant today as it was written. Choose this day. Not tomorrow, 
It's not a decision that we made at our baptism. It wasn't yesterday. Choose today who you are going to follow. If we do not choose whom we will serve, if we are unwilling to serve the Lord, then by default we're serving ourselves. We end up serving false gods. Our attention and focus devoted on ourselves, on the trappings of this world, instead on he who has created us for so much more. Each day, each moment in our life, we have a choice. <clears throat> and some of those choices might be more obvious, others less so. We may even say that we are forced or expect it, but it still requires an act of the will. Nobody forces me to answer a sick call. I choose to by the grace of God. In the second reading, wives be subject to your husbands. That's something that only a celibate can say publicly. These words of St. Paul put before you a choice. Wives be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. Now it's 2021 and these words are considered fighting words. We have equal rights. We have feminism, gender roles, and all of that seems to be so confused at times that some things need to be sorted out. St. Paul gives this advice. He gives it specifically to wives, not to put them down or to perpetuate an idea that they're second-class citizens, yet to put into perspective the role of husband and wife in marriage. Wives, be subject to your husband as you are to the Lord. But St. Paul doesn't stop there. And if we stop there, we can easily get offended. We can easily get caught up in false theology. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her in order to make her holy. He continues with even further instruction for husbands. They should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. In the sacrament of marriage, we know that the sacrament is centered on love. But in order to live out that sacrament, any sacrament for that matter, we have to understand what it means to love. And again, a lot of confusion surrounds that one word. The word is misused and overused in the wrong context. I love ice cream. I love summer. I love my spouse. We use the exact same language, but hopefully we mean something different by loving our spouse and loving ice cream. The church and the Catechism of the Catholic Church defines love to be to desire or to will the good of another. And the reference is made to the writing of St. Thomas Aquinas. For a husband to love his wife he must at all times desire her good. Not just to make her feel good, but to desire what is truly good for her and her soul. To desire her holiness, each act of love, each decision made in that marriage, bringing her closer to Jesus, closer to heaven. To love her as Christ loves her as he loves each and every one of us, <clears throat> desiring our good, desiring us to be holy, to become saints, to live as we were created to live, to love with a sacrificial love so pure that he would rather suffer and die on the cross than be without us for all eternity. Husbands, you have a very high bar set before you. Strive daily to reach that bar. And with a husband desiring the good of his wife always, how could St. Paul's words cause upset? Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. 
It can cause upset because we're human. It causes upset because we are weak, we fail, we are not perfect. It isn't just a visiting priest that has deeply rooted sin. Each one of us are being called to be holy. We are being called to be saints, and God is providing us a grace daily to do so. And whether we're called to the vocation of marriage, priesthood, or religious life, we are not called there because we are the perfect priest, husband, wife, or religious. We are called by God yes, so that we may serve him and his church through the charisms, through the gifts that he's given us, but he also calls us so that we too may be purified, that we too may be sanctified, made holy through our vocation. <clears throat> Wives, if your husbands don't love you as Christ loves the church, it is not that you married the wrong man. He has been called to marry life and so have you, and to do so is to grow in holiness, aid one another in that growth. And husbands, if you do not love your wives as Christ love you, it loves you, then seek the grace that God is offering you in your vocation, in the sacrament of marriage, so that you may grow, that you may grow in holiness and be sanctified. Just as God pours out his grace upon a selfish priest with a sick call in the middle of the night, he is also pouring out his grace upon each and every one of us, regardless of our vocation. Specific grace for us to overcome sin. Specific grace to be a better man or a woman tomorrow than we are today, to be sanctified, to become a saint. There's this horrible running joke that husbands and wives become saints because they put up with or they endure their spouse for the entire marriage. That lie takes reality and it skews it. It twists it. It takes the truth and mocks the sacrament. Through marriage, through any vocation, the end goal is always the same. To fulfill our baptismal call, our call to holiness, to become saints. So instead of enduring our vocation or putting up with it, putting up with those we are called to love, let us look toward those moments. Let us look to those people as an opportunity to receive the grace being poured out upon us the grace we require to become holy and blameless in the sight of our God. Let us choose this day whom we will serve, not stumbling through life with a, this half hope that one day I'll stumble into heaven. Let us be intentional. Let us make a conscious choice, a firm decision that today, this day, we will serve our Lord. Let us now profess our baptismal creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for his entire people. For Pope Francis, Bishop Christian, and the College of Bishops, that they may strengthen the faithful through unity in their teaching, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the millions of people affected by wildfire, fire, drought, flooding, and extremes of heat, and especially for the people of Haiti, as they again mourn the loss of family and friends by earthquake, we pray to the Lord. For families who are still affected by separation as the pandemic lingers, and for a swift reduction in rise numbers of infection, we pray to the Lord. For people who suffer violence within their homes and families, and for a strengthening of mutual love and patience, we pray to the Lord. For the poor, especially single parent families, challenged by rising food and rent prices, and for all children who are hungry, we pray to the Lord. For anyone among us who is ill or awaiting surgery or treatment, and for residents in long-term care and for their families, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, Jim Owens, Gloria Nice, Melvina Brooks McKenzie, Albert Hebert, and John Wallace. And for those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you <clears throat> so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Pius and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance a peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Riesbeck our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be in. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. O Lord, be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.